the Software Security Research Group, which consists of students and professors from the University of Ottawa, as well as IBM staff, have been working on the problem of crawling rich internet applications. Uh, the motivation for this project was twofold. Uh, Web 2.0 technologies are becoming more prevalent in our customer base and in order for us to meet our, uh, our customer expectations we needed to build significant new capabilities to be able to scan and analyze Web 2.0 applications for security vulnerabilities and the other types of issues that we analyze uh, web applications for. That was, a, that was a significant hole in our product offering when we started this project. This, the second motivation really is to uh, leverage the IBM relationships with the broad university-based uh, research community and to begin to build relationships with universities in Canada especially uh, to help us solve some of the tough technical problems that we face in, in our product. When, uh you honored to contact me about this possible projects in the area of internet security. I found it quite interesting and so I thought of uh, doing this together with a colleague of mine, uh, uh, Mr. Dr. Jordan, and uh, so we got together and uh, built this project. So I'm very happy to participate in this and in particular I appreciate very much in this industry collaboration to have so much input from uh, uh, the representative of the industry here. Uh, uh, Vio is really a person who participates regularly in our meetings and contributes a lot about the direction of our project. So I okay, so some people would ask why such projects are important for IBM and uh, you know I believe that uh, uh, the synergy that uh, the two academia and uh, industry bring together it's quite powerful uh, and and that you know uh, by having the the mixture of the two you are able to tackle some problems that are research intensive but while in the same time uh, being with uh, having a good grasp of reality and that will enable a project to reach its true potential uh, and and this potential cannot be reached uh, by just having one of the two uh, working on, on on the problem statement. Uh, rich internet applications have become very popular, and uh, their usage is very widespread. And because of this, this this research is very important because we need to be able to successfully crawl these types of applications in order to be able to uh, analyze these applications for security vulnerabilities, for usability issues, and of course we also need to be able to index all of the content from these applications in order to be able to search them. Before, uh, we had basically the page was the result of the last request from the server and so if you wanted to model what the web application was all you had to do was to look at every page and see where each page would uh, go uh, in the embedded URL in the page and uh, that would give you a model. Uh, that's not the case anymore if the page once loaded can modify itself and go from state to state without basically loading a new page. Uh, so the primary uh, problem we are trying to achieve to, to resolve is to uh, first come up with a mathematical model that can capture this information uh, and then create an algorithm that can automatically build such a model for any given rich internet application. The main idea of our calling algorithm has been to try to explore all states of the applications as fast as possible. Now, in general, um, the, uh, the number of states can be very big, and the number of transitions and events which you can execute is even much bigger. So we do not want to 
execute all possible events if necessary. We only want to reach all states. How can we do this? Well, we think that in many cases uh, the order in which events are executed do not really matter. And if that is really the case on the given application, then one can say that it follows a hypercube model. And our algorithm is um, optimizing the state exploration under the case that this application is really a hypercube model, hyper model. Now, on the other hand, uh, we can never be sure that the application really follows uh, this model, so we also have to be sure, eventually, if we want really to be sure that we have explored all states, we have to explore all possible events. For event-based crawling, the following hypothesis is made. Given a state S that has N enabled events, these N events are independent. This means that if one starts at S and executes a given subset of these events in any order, this will lead to the same state. This defines a hypercube of size N and is used to build an initial crawling strategy. There are two algorithms which are used to produce an initial crawling strategy. Each algorithm produces a set of chains which consists of a series of states and transitions which represent a path through the application. The minimum chain decomposition produces chains which cover all states of a hypercube in a minimum number of paths and transitions. MCD chains visit each state of a hypercube only once. The second algorithm is called the minimum transition coverage. This algorithm produces chains which cover all transitions of a hypercube in a minimum number of paths and transitions. It also allows the chains produced by the MCD algorithm to be used as constraints. In that case, MCD chains are maintained and they become subchains of MTC chains. For a hypercube, the MTC algorithm allows coverage of all states and all transitions as quickly as possible. In instances where the application does not conform to the structure of a hypercube, the strategy is able to identify this, and the chains produced by the MTC are revised to reflect these cases. Once the revisions are made, the next chain to be crawled is selected based on the desire to discover all states as quickly as possible, and then to discover all remaining transitions as quickly as possible. progress to date on this project has been very substantial. We've built a, a very significant uh, and fruitful working relationship with the research team at the University of Ottawa. We've also developed significant new technology that will ensure that our ability to analyze and, and cover the complete, the complete application for Web2.0 web uh, web applications will be achieved. Uh, the impact of this to our customers, ultimately, when we're able to deliver this in product, will be that they now can rely on our products to do something that no other product can do, which is to fully analyze and fully test their Web 2.0 web applications for security and other issues. We use IPM Rational AppScan Enterprise to demonstrate the algorithms that were described previously. You will see a demonstration with a naive implementation and with the implementation of the prototype. The Firefox window that you see on the screen contains three tabs. The first tab contains explanation about the examples. The second tab contains implementation of the prototype. The third tab contains implementation of a naive approach. Going to the second example, we can compare the number of states between the naive implementation and the prototype implementation. In this example, you can see the contrast between the prototype and the naive implementation. Moving along to the fourth example, you can see this difference again. This time, 
the difference between the number of states found by the prototype and the number of states found by the naive implementation is quite significant. The number of states found by the prototype is 24, which matches the number of states of the website, while the number of states traversed by the naive implementation is 3. The final example of this demonstration mimics a complex website. In this case, the number of states traversed by the naive implementation is 5, whereas in fact the website has 39 states. The difference can be easily seen by comparing the naive implementation with the prototype implementation. On the left hand side of the screen we can see a graph of the application. This graph matches the graph that is found by our prototype, while on the right hand side we can see the states traversed by the naive implementation, which are a total of five. And this is how the website looks like. A typical website could consist of a home page, a services page, a store page where the clients can buy products, a pictures page with a previous and next buttons, and a contact. This website summarizes some of the most common patterns that we see on our clients' websites. I would say that the biggest accomplishment of this project is that uh, so far we have been able to create uh, a product, a prototype of a product that uh, allows us to evaluate our uh, research ideas into practice and allows us to understand what are the advances that we've done through this research. I think what we are trying to achieve in this project will have a big impact on the quality of uh, web applications we are using. For example, the search engines will be able to uh, index more content and uh, this will result in better uh, search results. Also, we will be able to test the web applications uh, more uh, uh, comprehensively so that uh, there will be less security vulnerabilities and uh, usability issues with the web applications. The progress made over the last uh, for one year has been very exciting, but still there are a lot of problems to be solved as we continue to evolve our research to crawl into the applications, and we expect a thrilling future.